Hey guys, this is Donnie from databases.biz. Um, in this video, I am going to show you to create how to create a combo box and then have it update other fields based on the selection from that combo box. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a table. Um, so I'm going to do combo, let's say combo ID, I'll make the auto number and primary key. Here I'm going to call uh, company headquarters and location and zip code. Now I'm just gonna save it, save it right here and call this a combo box. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and populate it. So I'm gonna say IBM, Google, Microsoft. For the headquarters, I'm gonna say HQ IBM, HQ Google. HQ Microsoft, location, California, let's see, Florida, and Texas, we'll say. And zip code, I'm just gonna match it up with the ID there. All right, so we got that, now I can close this. Next thing I wanna do is create a, I guess like a drop down type menu, so when I'm doing a selection, because we're gonna need that for updating our information. Um, actually, I, I think I'll make this the drop down, to tell you the truth. Um, let's say this is drop down. And I always create a drop down um, table for all my drop down menus to select from. So I'm going to call this my drop down. And I'm going to go back in here and, and modify some stuff. I'm going to call this drop down ID. So I'm going to change that to that. And then I'm going to. I could use that almost that same table again, so I'm just going to do copy it, but I'm only going to copy the structure and combo test is what I'm going to call this. And I'm going to go into design view and I'm going to go to company. So company is going to be my drop down menu and I'm going to make company update these other three fields. So I'm going to go to lookup and I'm going to change this to combo box and I'm going to leave that as table query and for row source, I'm going to hit these three dots right here. And I'm going to use my drop down table for my row source. Um, I'm going to put all, put all my data in here. I'm going to put this, my drop down ID at the end. I'm going to say it is null. And so that leads me with, and then for company, um, I'm going to use all the data, but let's just, just so you know, if you ever decide you want to create yourself a drop down table, which I always do. Um, I would actually have categories in here and things um, for my information and and use that. So I would put categories um, and we actually want this as not null. Now that I just saw the piece of data. So you don't want that to be null. So I would have categories. So that this would be like company and that, or this would be category. The field name would be category. And then this would be company. And then over here I'd have this other information. So then Right here under category, I'll put company, and then it would know, you know, that, and then you can do multiple drop down options inside one table. So I'm, I'll probably show that later down the road, just so you know what I'm talking about in case you didn't get that. All right, so get that. Maybe I'll do A to Z there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close it, save it, yes. So now we got a drop down menu, and I don't, I actually do want column heads, so. Company's good, headquarters is good, location is good, and zip code is good. I won't be showing the drop down ID. And just remember, you got five columns here. All right, so drop down heads, I'm going to say yes to that. Column count, we're going to say five. Down column is the first column, which is company. So when you select company, it's going to go into this field. Um, column width, remember we have five fields. I think two. Two inches for, should be enough for all of them. And on that last column, which is the ID column, we don't even want to see it, so you can put zero. I'm going to change 16 to 50, so I get the max option for drop downs. And then right here, you just add these up. So you get a total of eight, so I'll just put eight there for the column width, so it shows all the columns. I'm going to limit to list, not going to allow value edits. All right, so that is good, and I'm going to save it. Then I'm just going to open it up to see the drop down, and then you can see right here is all the drop down menus. So when I create the form here in just a second, it's going to update these other fields based on this. So now we'll go ahead and get over to the form. And we're going to create a form, form design. 
we're going to make the data source be our combo test, um, which I don't think has data in it yet. Good. That's what we want. And then design, and then we're going to go over to add existing fields. We're going to put the, these three fields in, but the company, we're going to put a drop down. So you pick that from here and you scroll where it says combo box. And that's what we're going to put here. And I don't need to do the wizard. Um, so property for the data source for the combo box can be company. And we're going to name it CBO. So that's a prefix for combo box and company. So we know that it is a combo box. And this will just name the company. This is the label. So it matches up. And then all of this, we're going to right click, layout, and tab. And I don't like how that looks right there. So right, I like them being uniform. I don't like that gap. So I'm going to get rid of the cap. And for these, I'm going to make them a little bit longer. All right, so we're ready now to go ahead and create our coding for the combo box. So all you do is go click on here, the actual box, and you go over to event, and we're going to do an after update event. So you can do event procedure. So we're going to actually do some Visual Basic here. And let's see, so... And make sure you do some error trapping in here. And if you don't know about that, we'll do that in another video. So what I'm going to do is CBO company dot set focus. Next one is going to be me dot, let's see, what is one of the fields? Headquarters. Right there, you can see it. Equals, and, and I need to go back now because now I can't remember off the top of my head. Where are those fields? Let's see, what was it? Combo test? I want to see where those fields are. So, company is the one that we're going to select, but then you got here. And remember, it starts with zero. So, this is zero for the columns. This is zero, one, two, and three. So, headquarters is one, location is two, and zip code is three. So, we want to remember that. So, we're starting with headquarters, so that's going to be one. So, I'm going to go up and leave this open just in case I have to come back. And we'll go back to our visual basic and then it's going to be so me.headquarters equals cbo company dot um, column and then it was one all right so then me dot next one was what location so just check your memory is zip location is zip code okay memory sucks location equals cbo company uh, column parentheses two and then last one is me dot not location zip code I'm just keep hitting enter just hit tab and then you will bring that next line and then cbo company dot column three all right so that should do it i mean that's really it hopefully it works um, I'm saving my form. Combo box test. I said combo box. Yeah, I said test. All right, so save that. All right, so I shouldn't need that open anymore. Now I'm going to view the form. And right here, which, oh, okay. Let's switch this. Actually, I didn't need to do this. Normally I'm hard coding this stuff in on the form, and I, but most of the time I also do it on the table, so I don't know how to do that. I'm going to do, uh, okay, okay, this should be fine. This isn't deleting my visual basic code, so you'll see in a second. I'm going to pull the data source because I actually created, remember I created that drop down menu already in the uh, table right here. So I didn't need to do, get rid of that and put one in from up here. I actually just had to drag it in because I had already did it in the table. You'll see what I mean in a second. But what I will do is over here on other, Over here, other where it says company, I'm actually going to type CBO, and then I'm going to type over here. I'm going to put event procedure, and now you can see I shouldn't have to do anything. Eh, well, did I not do it? I didn't do it in update or after update event. Let me get rid of this. Sorry, just follow along with me if you can. <laughs> so, all right. So after update. Now, you see now it's right there. You see the cursor right there. It's where it needs to be. So that is a quick fix. Do make mistakes to do this thing on the fly. So now I should have drop down items. Okay, so a moment of truth. Will it work? So we're going to click on Google. All right, it worked. Now I'm going to add a new record. 
So I got Google. I want to add IBM. Everything went in there. And then new record. And then I add Microsoft. So now you see everything went in. I got three records. I'm going to close this form. Open up my combo test. And there you go. Now you got three records. And that's it. So um, if you have any questions or anything, you know, my website is databases.biz. There's some tutorials on Microsoft Access over there. I'm working as fast as I can to create some um, useful access videos, little short and quick videos for you. Um, so you can see how things are done. So you don't have to sit there and read and try to figure it out. You can just watch a video. It's way easier. Um, but if there's something you're trying to figure out, just let me know and I'll see if I can help you out. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. You know, I volunteered my time to do this. Um, and it really helps me out when you do that. All right. Thank you.